I was recently asked to be the official show photographer at one of this region's annual country shows. I'm more accustomed to shooting landscapes, but it sounded like a fun event, so I agreed. One of the attractions at the show was a stunt motocross team who performed various mid-air jump tricks. And as soon as I saw them on the official program, I thought it'd be cool to capture a sequence of them and then stack it all together into a kind of static time lapse. Here is what the end result looks like. And I'll now explain every step of creating this awesome action shot. So let's talk about taking the shots first. You will need a camera that can shoot at a relatively high speed and depending on how far you are away from the action, a tripod might be a good idea too. You can shoot handheld if you like, that's how I did it, but it's up to you. Before the action starts, you need to carefully compose your shot. Think about where the action's gonna be and what obstructions might get in the way. Think about the line of sight from you to the subject area and make sure that nothing is gonna restrict your view. If you're shooting in daytime with decent light, then you can shoot at an aperture of f8. If you're shooting a fast-moving subject, such as a motorbike, you need a very fast exposure time to freeze the action, 1 500th at an absolute minimum, preferably a thousandth or even less. You should now pre-focus your shot and make sure that everything's sharp that you want to be sharp. Then, and this is really important, turn off autofocus so that the camera doesn't suddenly refocus in the middle of your action shot. You'll need to shoot in burst mode on your camera. These modes have different names on different cameras, so consult your manual if you're unsure how to enable it. My X-T4 shoots burst photos at a rate of 15 frames per second, which is more than enough for our purposes. Once you've lined up your shot, wait for the subject to approach your camera frame and start shooting. If you're shooting handheld, try and keep the camera still and the frame consistent for the duration of the burst. Make sure you get the entire range of movement from start to end. That might mean starting the burst just before the subject enters the frame. So now you've got your sequence of shots, import those images into your raw editor of choice. Find the first shot in the sequence and apply any post-processing you like. Just be careful not to overdo it. Now, copy those settings from that first image over into all the other photos in the sequence. It's important they all have identical settings. If you shot at a suitably fast exposure speed and pre-focus correctly, the images should be nice and sharp, but you can always apply sharpening in your raw editor or use a third-party sharpening app like Topaz sharpen AI. Now that you have your sequence of photos all processed, it's time to create our stack time lapse stack. Now I'll be creating my stack in Photoshop, but the tools we're using are just alignment and masking, and so any decent photo editor will work just as well. I use the export as layers to Photoshop option in Lightroom to get all of my individual shots into a single stack of layers. When I imported them, the sequence was in the wrong order. You need the first exposure on the bottom of the layer stack. To reverse the stacking order of the selected layers, go to Layer Menu and choose Arrange and then Reverse. The next step is to align the images. Select all of the layers and then in the Edit menu select Auto Align Layers. You may find you have transparent areas around your image. If so, simply crop in a bit to remove them. Now, in my example shots here, two riders were appearing in my shots because they were doing a dual stunt. So don't be confused when you see the walkthrough if there's an extra rider in some of the layers. I will be only using one of those riders for this image sequence. Now, turn off all the layers except the first one on the bottom of the layer stack. It's time to create our masks. 
Turn on the next layer above and draw a selection around the subject. This doesn't usually have to be super accurate. Just be aware there might be overlaps, so you might have to finesse that selection slightly. Once the subject is selected, hit the mask button or press Ctrl or Command backslash. All you have to do now is repeat this process, working your way up the layer stack. Enable the layer, select the subject, and then mask it. After you finish masking, you should have a progression of the subject through the frame. You may find that it's looking a bit crowded and choose to use every other layer. That's what I did with my image. Once I'd finished all my masking, I decided to crop in further on my shot to pano dimensions so that all the action was incorporated with a much tighter frame. Finally, I saved the image back into Lightroom and did some final tweaks. I isolated the foreground and the subject and applied some clarity and texture to really make them pop out of the background. So there you go guys, that's how to create a static action time-lapse shot. If you got value from this video, then please give it a like and consider subscribing for more photography and drone related content like this in your YouTube feed. Till the next time guys, ta-ta.